I'm Lynn Ahrens. Uh, I'm a lyricist and a librettist, uh, which basically means that um, I write the words. And I'm Stephen Flaherty. I'm a composer, which means I write the notes and uh, comment on her words, and she comments on my notes. We're, so we're a writing team. Yeah. We write together. <laughs> so what comes first, the music or the words? It's always the question. What's the first, the chicken or the egg, the music or the words? And usually, in our case, it's the coffee and then the idea. We talk about character, dramatic situation, and uh, gradually words and or music form. Whoever has the passion runs with it. So It's like uh, a tennis match. Back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah. Lynn and I got to Lincoln Center Theater uh, because we had a, a wonderful relationship with both Andre Bishop and Ira Weitzman at Playwrights Horizons, which produced our first two shows. And we were invited to come uptown uh, with our musical My Favorite Year. My favorite year, when nothing could stand in my way. My favorite year. Andre and Ira were instrumental in our careers. Uh, way back when, we, they, the waters parted and Ira Weitzman walked out of a crowd and said, come and see me. And at that point, they were both at Playwrights. Uh, they were so welcoming to us as young writers who had never done anything. My favorite year. They got us grants. They produced our first show, which was a show called Lucky Stiff. They produced our second show, which was called Once on this Island, which went to Broadway. And we have remained like this with them ever since. Um, and when they came here, of course, we followed them right over uh, as quickly as we could. It was a wonderful place to be. We've yeah. done uh, four shows here at Lincoln Center. Being at Lincoln Center, when we first step through the doors, essentially what it means is you're stepping into um, the best not-for-profit theater in America. And you're being welcomed into these what are essentially hallowed halls where great writers have come before you and great writers will come after you. Um, it's a tremendous honor and to this moment, I mean we, we are discussing bringing another show here pretty soon if we can ever finish writing it. Um, it's, it's just an honor that keeps on giving really, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, we consider it our artistic home. Well there's something about Lincoln Center, for me it's truly our national theater. And there was something yeah. about walking in on the first day of our first show, my favorite year. And Bernie Garston came up to me at the meet right, right before we did the meet and greet. You know, we had a bagel and like a cup of coffee. And he said, "I hope you remember this moment." He said, "And I hope you come every day to rehearsal and just savor this and take it in." He said, "Even if it's the worst writing day, or the <laughs> actors are fighting, or the director is losing his mind," he said, "You just have to remember, you are here at Lincoln Center." And I thought, he is right. So every single day I've been in this theater, I've cherished uh, and felt grateful to yeah. be here. And you walk down the halls, and there are posters all down That's the right. halls. And you just, and some of ours are there now, you know? And we look at them as we pass, and we go, oh, we're on the wall, you know? It's, it's just so great to be here. It's wonderful. And they give you great parties. Not to keep gushing about Lincoln Center, but you can't help it. They are very supportive in terms of developing work. And um, I think we've done by now probably a thousand readings, 1,750 <laughs> workshops, and I don't know. You know, we keep, we come and we develop and we do a reading, and Andre will come afterwards and give you comments, and, and his comments are so astute and so lovely and gentle. And um, there are things like, Lynn, it's a beautiful pudding with too many raisins. <laughs> A Man of No Importance uh, is a small gem of a film. I think for me as the composer, it was the hardest musical I ever had to write because these are characters that are very secretive and they keep a lot of their secrets to themselves. So trying to find a musical in to that particular piece, you know, was quite challenging. So um, with Terrence McNally adding the character of Oscar Wilde, who was not in the film, uh, into the musical, all of a sudden, uh, there was a way for our protagonist to speak and there was a theatrical convention that made this show sing. And it's, it's a show that I, I truly think is pr probably one of my favorites that, I, that I've ever done. It was a true collaboration, I think, of, of two Irishmen and a Jew. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, but it, it came out to be this beautiful play-like musical that I personally am so proud of and, and happy that we had the time you know, to develop it properly. What we had was something what we had was rare, poetry and art in the air, and friends. Good morning, my dear friends. Across the freezing countryside of friends we travel. We thought Grazi would direct The Glorious Ones, but 
In the course of writing The Glorious Ones, we brought her Dessa Rose to read, and she was so taken aback because she was sure that it was going to be The Glorious Ones, but in fact we showed her Dessa Rose, because by the time we figured out how to write it, I had written about 60 or 75 pages of it, and that's what made Stephen realize the, the take that I was seeing on it and how it could be done. How it came to be. of an American opera. So Lynn had pretty much written uh, a rough first draft of Act One of Dessa Rose. And uh, then she handed it off to me and I actually left the city. And I was in the country and I was spending time reading it, uh, perusing it, spending quality time. And I waited for a magical moment to, for the music to be released. And it was actually in the middle of a thunderstorm. And all of a sudden, the, the, the lights went off, and there was literally lightning, thunder, a crazy storm. And I sat at the piano with a tape recorder and literally uh, outpoured all of these musical themes, one after another after another. So whenever Lynn and I finally did get together back in the city, I said, you won't believe it. Here's 50 minutes of new music that you haven't heard. And then we had the rough material and the feel of Dessa Rose. Our latest show at Lincoln Center, The Glorious Ones, which is about the Commedia dell'arte, there's something that's sort of impossible to write about it because basically you are writing a script about something that is about improvisation. So how do you create the script? How do you create the music? How do you still keep a sense of the improvisation? So that was one wild rehearsal period with Graciela Danielle. The Glorious Ones is based on a novel by Francine Prose, a wonderful writer. Uh, it's set in 17th century Italy. Um, and it involves a, a, a troupe of traveling uh, comedians, ragtag, vulgar vulgarians who go along the roads in the piazzas of Italy at that time putting on this very bawdy comedy. And I was so attracted to the book because of the, the world and the colors and so on and so forth. And I did a ton of research, but the weird thing is that when all is said and done, it's about us. It's about theater people. It's about what we dream about, what we want to be when we grow up, and what we want to leave behind when we go. See our show, La Comedia! point where we were about to let go of the glorious ones and we had believe it or not never met the author and we said you know we, we, this might be a song cycle this might not be a theater piece and she said you know I've never heard any of the songs I wrote her a I'd letter I'd love to hear the songs and we met uh, with with Francine Prose and her husband and we played maybe five songs from the glorious ones and she literally burst into tears and she said the way these songs make me feel is how I felt when I was writing that novel mm -hmm. they're so theatrical there is so much story in it and let's face it, plot was never the strong suit with the novel in the, in the first place. And she said, you must not abandon it. It needs to live on a stage. And then she said, and so what? So I'm going to give you the rights for free. And you'll just have and to do did. the show. And she did. <laughs>